Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you why you should probably stop throwing exceptions in your application in many places where you shouldn't be and I'm going to show you what's the alternative and what you gain by going with that alternative. If you like the content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the sound notification bell and for more training check out nickchapsters.com. Now before I move on I want to let you know that my brand new course From Zero to Hero Integration Testing in ASP.NET Core is now out. I'm super proud of it, I put a lot of effort in teaching you the right things that you would see in a big company doing things right. It applies to APIs, MVC, Blazor applications. It shows you how you can properly integration test your application and what does it mean to integration test an application, what should be replaced, what shouldn't, how you should deal with that. We're touching on Docker, on Playwright, we're touching on so many advanced state-of-the-art things you would see. So if you want to buy the course, the first 300 of you can use the discount code you see on your screen right now and down below. I highly recommend you check it out. Integration testing is such a crucial part of your testing suite and it's as important and in some cases for some people more important than unit testing. Some people tend to skip unit testing and do integration testing just because of the value that it brings. Now I think you need both but I can totally see that argument. So check the link in the description, use the code, trust me when I say these run out quickly and I hope you have as much fun taking the course as I had making it. Now back to the video. All right, enough of that. Now let me show you what I have here. I have a simple API. It is a customer's API. And if I go to the controller just to show you what I have, it is a simple API controller. I have my basic CRUD stuff here so I can create, get, get all, update and delete a customer exactly as you'd expect. Uh, and then I have my customer service, which has a few dependencies, namely my repository because I'm using Dapper, um, the iGitHub service because I'm validating that a GitHub username provided by the API is valid. And then I have a validator which has all the validation about my model in here in this abstract validator. So all the rules are laid down here. And what happens is if in my service over here, the validator determines that the values are invalid, then I'm throwing. And then later here, if GitHub responds with a 404, meaning that the GitHub username doesn't exist, then it also throws a validation exception because the GitHub username provided is not valid. And the way this is now turned into a bad request is I have this middleware over here, this exception middleware, which you might have used in the past. And I just await the delegate and then I'm catching that exception if it's there. And then I'm setting it to a bad request 400 and I'm mapping it to a problem details, a validation problem details object. So I'm iterating all the errors and returning that back and all that gives me the following experience. Let me just run this API. And as you can see, if I try to call this with an empty email, it says email must not be empty. If I try to call it with an invalid email, then it says email is not a valid email. So we have proof of validation in place for what we have here. Now, raise your hand if you've done this before. You throw some exception somewhere in your application and then you have some form of middleware or filter that catches that exception and converts it into, let's say, something like the bad request one that we do here. Now, this excludes catch all exception filters that catches things that are unexpected and it returns a 500 because of that. This is more about things you added explicitly part of your business logic or your application's logic. Now, in my opinion, you should not be doing that. And I'm going to show you the alternative, which is actually a borrowed concept from other languages. But before I do that, I want to run a performance test against this API as it is. Now, even though it has dependencies like database and the GitHub API, it's going to throw and return early. I want to test how the API responds when a bad request is thrown. Because remember, we are throwing an exception to catch and convert. And there's a cost. Now, you might say the cost is minor. Let's see that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to .NET run C release. So run this API in release mode and I'm going to go back here. And what I'm going to run is this file over here. This is a K6 performance test. I have a video on K6 if you're interested. And all it's really doing is it uses 10 virtual users for a minute and it hits that API as hard as it can with this payload over here. And then I'm expecting a response pack and this is expected to be 400 bad requests. I could validate the body as well, but I don't need to. So that's what's happening. So now I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and say K6, 
uh, run and I'm going to run the uh, stress test. So K6 is now spamming everything for a minute and I'm going to give it a minute and not have you wait. I'm going to edit and let's see how this API performs in its current form where a validation error is throwing an exception and is being caught and translated in a middleware. All right, so the test results are back. However, I'm not going to show you the test results just yet, but just know it is up there. Anyway, I'm going to leave this as it is and stop this API and I'm going to refactor it to not have to use that exception throwing mechanism. And the way I'm going to do that is with a new type, the result type, which is very common in other languages like Rust or F Sharp, well-designed languages, and it really makes life easier with handling these types of things. Now, it is a more functional paradigm. It's actually a monad. We're not going to go into what a monad is. We don't have that sort of time, but I'm going to explain to you how you can easily use that to refactor that exception throwing out of your application and explain why, in my opinion, it is a better approach. Now, I'm not going to make that type myself, even though I could, but instead, just because I want to show you the result, I'm going to use a package called language extensions Core, great package, give it a like in the description down below. It doesn't only have the result type, but it also has other functional elements to spice C Sharp up, and it's something I personally use. All right, so now that I have this type, I'll go ahead and remove, first and foremost, this middleware. So no validation exception middleware, this thing will not be used. And now I'm going to go to my iCustomer service, and I'm going to change this create method, and also the update method that does the same, by the way, and remove this validate and throw call and change it with a var validation results equals validator dot validate async the customer. And now I'm going to get the errors back. And I can say that if validation results are not valid, in fact, this is validation result, not results is singular. Then what I want is create a validation exception. So still create a validation exception here, but not throw it. Just create it based on the validation result dot errors, which is what um, Fluent Validation will actually do behind the scenes to create this validation exception in the first place. And I'm not going to throw it. Instead, I'm going to change this type from bool to result, which accepts a bool as a generic type. And now I'm also going to update, of course, the interface over here. So this will be updated. And also let's update the update method as well. So both of them have been updated and I'm going to change it here as well. And now, as you can see, my code here hasn't thrown an exception. This thing that returns task bool is still accepted by this return type. This is because result actually internally if I go all the way down, has an implicit operator to automatically convert the object to its result type form. Now for the exception, I actually have to be explicit, especially with a task. So I have to say var return new result bool and then pass down the validation exception, which might look a bit clunky, but don't worry about it. It would just say we return this exception and we're going to do the same one here. Instead of throwing this exception here, we are just going to return it. And that's it. And I can go ahead and actually just remove this throw altogether. Now we could also extract some things there and refactor this piece of code and make it even cleaner. We're not going to worry about that. I just want to show you the change. I'm going to do the same here in this update. So um, do this and then I'm going to use return result now. Here we go. And of course, now if I go to the controller, nothing has broken. However, this thing over here now returns that result type. Now let's take a look at what that result type is in the first place. So as you can see, it is a read-only struct, so allocation-wise it will be very efficient, and it has a field for the value itself, the good value, the actual result, and it also has a field for the exception, and can have two states. It can have a success state, so things are good, or a faulted state, so things are not good, I have an exception in me. And the way this works as a discriminated union as well is that this thing can be either one or the other. It can never be both. And then you have to handle both of these different aspects of this type, meaning if something is well, I'm going to do something with it. If something is bad, if, if I have an exception effectively and this is faulted, then I'm also going to do something for it. So how this looks here? Well, I'm going to say return result dot 
match. And I can match either of those states. As you can see here, I can match the success state and the failure state, and I can grab those objects in there. So in the good state that this item returns a Boolean and the Boolean indicates created or not on the database layer, then I can actually just copy everything as it is here. And I'm going to say, here is my good path. If everything is good, then create the user. If things are not good, however, and I have an exception, then I can choose to do something about that. Now, in my case, I care that exception is validation exception. So validation exception. And if something happens here, I want to handle that. What I want to say is return bad request validation exception dot to problem details. So I'm actually reusing that mapper that I had over here to return the appropriate object. And now because just the bad request and the validation exception is what I care, every other exception is going to return a new status code and the status code will be uh, 500. So internal server error. Now this does not compile. However, if I go up here and I say this is an eye action result, then everyone is happy. Now, don't be scared by how much more code this is. You can extract that and make an extension method and say result dot to created or to OK or to bad request and refactor it and make it just one line of code with that generic logic in that other method. And let me just quickly off screen also do it for the update method. All right, here's the update method as well. We no longer throw anything. We just match and we return the type. All right, and now if I run this API, I can go ahead in Postman and I can show you that I have the exact same experience. Email must not be empty. And if it's an invalid email, then email is not a valid email without having to throw any exceptions. And where's the biggest flaw of the exception throwing other than what we're going to see in a second? Well, it's actually that it works as a form of go to call because it can be thrown by anything and anything at any point can throw that type of exception. And if that exception is thrown, you go to the middleware and you have to then handle that there, which is an interruption of the execution flow, which I really don't like. I said you jump to unless you know it exists. It is weird. So that way you can follow the code in a way more explicit way and understand how everything flows and how things are handled. And just to prove that this doesn't have to be that much code after I show you the next thing, I'm going to refactor it. But what I want to do now is I want to stop this and I'm going to go here and I'm going to rerun this API now with the new way using the result type and I'm going to run the performance tests again. And let's see how this performs now without any exception throwing, just the result type. All right, the results are back. And what I have here is these requests per second, which is what I care about. 34.3 thousand requests per second with the result type. Now I'm going to scroll up and see how much the exception throwing one did. 19.4 thousand. That is worse than the one Third, it is absurd just for throwing the exception. There's a hidden cost in doing this. And now this test assumes that every request in that time frame will be a failure, which won't be the case. And the realistic result depends on how often your users are to fail registration and how many of those requests you get per second. But you can't deny that your application will consume significantly more resources to do this for no benefit, for worse code that jumps around and you can't really control the flow. So in my opinion, you should not be doing that. Now, since I did talk about performance, I also want to address something that some of you might have noticed. By doing this, I am creating a closure to the customer object. I can actually easily fix that by going over here and making this return result of type customer instead of type Boolean. So instead of returning that response back, I can return the customer back. And if I do that, let's go ahead and update the interface as well real quick. And again, this heavily depends on how you design this. But if I do all that, I can go back here and I can say that this B now is the customer. So I can say cast over here and map that here and no longer have to worry about the closure. And I'll do the same for the update method as well. So I can go here, copy that, paste it here then go to the implementation, paste it here too, and bam and bam, and just return the customer back. And that's it. And now what I can do just to show you that this doesn't have to be a multi-line thing, I can go here and I can create a new uh, controller extensions. 
So with that, I can create a public static class. I can say public static I action result to OK in this case. And I will need two things. I will need the T result, which is the domain object, if you think about it. And I will also need, in my case, because I'm mapping to an API contract, a T contract over here. And this will be a this extension method on result of type T result. So we have the result over here. And then I also need a mapper. And the mapper is a function that accepts the T result and returns the T contract, right? So I'm going to do that. And I'm just going to say, in fact, I'm going to copy exactly as it is this file over here that doesn't have a closure anymore. So everything is self-contained. So I'm going to change a few things as I need to. So first, this is new OK object result now. This is new bad request or object result yep here we go and this is new status code result there we go and now this b is the t result type that i can use but all that mapping logic goes away so i no longer need that what i do need is var response equals and then i have the mapper and the mapper accepts the object and returns back the response contract so i'm passing that down here which means that all that now the thing i removed becomes return result dot to okay with that extension method and the mapper is customer so let's say c is c dot to customer response and that's it all those lines that you saw before became this with the exact same experience and now all that is generic you just have to provide the mapper call and the rest will just work for you just to quickly prove that it actually does work i can go here um, did i create successfully a user for me i don't know let's let's create one so happy path works absolutely fine going here trying to change it with a bad one and i'm getting the error as you can see going through that flow over here the one where let's just actually debug it why not let's click that it hits that breakpoint it gives me the result back the customer the fluent validation as you can see said that it failed it has an exception here it goes in the 2 ok method and you will see it goes in the exception block and I'm catching that, I'm dealing with it, returning the appropriate thing, and voila, that is handled appropriately. So I hope you learned something. I hope you saw the impact of exceptions and how you can refactor them out of your code if you want to. You don't have to go with that approach, but I find it better to work with. So it's ultimately up to you, but this is what I would do. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.